Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this uh, Sunday morning. A little snowy outside. So glad that everybody could join us uh, on this first Sunday in Advent. I'd like to welcome Reverend Sally Dries, who will be leading worship for us this morning as Pastor Jane is on vacation. Uh, some things to highlight in your bulletins, I do ask if you look through them. Um, there are a bunch of announcements in there, dates, upcoming events. Uh, please do take those home, look them through. Uh, some things to highlight, uh, this Friday night, the ladies are having their night out at the Pillow Hotel. Uh, December 12th, we will have our annual congregational meeting right now, or right during the worship service. Uh, and then Katata will be on December 19th. There are a couple additional Katata practice dates listed on the calendar there, so please do uh, look those over if you wish to join us while I was looking for more people. Some other things to point out, time and ability sheets, if you have not already filled one out, please do so and put it in the uh, offering plates or the baskets in the back. Um, one thing about this morning's service, uh, the hymn number listed for the first hymn in the service uh, is incorrect. It is going to be 196. Uh, that's also incorrect on the uh, board, but it will be correct on the uh, screens, the slideshow. And then, believe it or not, Christmas Eve is right around the corner. We are looking for additional help for a live nativity scene during the worship service. So if you know anybody that would like to participate in that, uh, please do uh, see Sarah. There it is. I was like looking, I couldn't, couldn't see in the back. Uh, please do Sarah. See Sarah. Um, that is all the announcements I have. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. Are there any additional announcements? Are there any additions to the prayer list? Yes. Oh. If you would like to lift up someone in prayer. No, no. Uh, no, which one? Oh. <laughs> There's like five notes up here. I don't know. No, 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 are mine. Um, yes. Ronnie Rashawn, the son of Donna Gilmore, and William Unstead, the brother of Donna Gilmore. Can we add them to the prayer list? Anybody else that needs added? Okay. If not, we will continue with our worship service. <laughs>
Good morning. If you are able, would you please stand in body and in spirit. Let us join together in our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good tidings. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, Jesus, God has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pass the peace to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Make that known.
We begin the season of Advent with expand and believing hearts. During Advent, we confront the darkness that so often exists around us. During Advent, we confront the doubt that so often resides within us. During Advent, we confront the division that so often occurs between us. This morning we light the first candle which reminds us of the ultimate hope that comes through our Savior's birth. In a world where we often get overwhelmed by our own circumstances, Advent comes as a gentle whisper offering us hope to heal the broken, befriend the lonely, and share the good news of the gospel. This morning let us begin this Advent season with expectant and believing hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we embark upon another Advent journey, we pray that we would be encouraged by hope, strengthened in unity, and inspired through faith. May our ears be open and our hearts ready to receive the gift of hope embodied in the Word made flesh. We pray this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, found in the Old Testament Pew Bible, page 860. The Lord said, The time is coming when I will fulfill the promises that I made to the people of Israel and Judah. At that time, I will choose a king, a righteous descendant of David. That king will do what is right and just throughout the land. The people of Judah and of Jerusalem will be rescued and will live in safety. The city will be called the Lord of our salvation. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 25, verses 1 through 8, or 1 through 10, as printed in the bulletin and on the screen. To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you, but to those who are quick to rebel, to rebel against you. Teach me to live according to your truth, for you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Forgive the sins and errors of my youth. In your constant love and goodness, remember me, Lord. He leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will.
The second lesson is written in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 9 to 13, found in the New Testament P. Bible, page 277. There is no need to write you about love for your fellow believers. You yourself have been taught by God how you should love one another. And you have, in fact, behaved like this toward all the brothers in all of Macedonia. So we beg you, our brothers, to do even more. Make it your aim to live a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to earn your own living, just as we told you before. In this way, you will win the respect of those who are not believers, and you will not have to depend on anyone for what you need. Our brothers, we want you to know the truth about those who have died, so that you will not be sad, as are those who have no hope. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The version that I will read this morning is from the New Revised Standard Version. So you may just want to listen. From Luke 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already here. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that the day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place. And to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Let us give thanks. Amen.
we should pencil those out for the next hymn. What do you think? I think it would certainly liven things up. Thanks to the choir. It's so nice to hear the choir again, is it not? I realize that I often come in the summer, and you're not here. But it's not summer anymore. Take a look outside. It's not summer anymore. And just to let you know that you live on the south side of the mountain, you have less snow than we do on the other side of the dorm side mountain. But it's always a delight to come here. To come here to be with you all, to share some thoughts, and to share some time together in our worship this day. Will you pray with me? O oh, loving and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You who are our strength and our redeemer. Let the people say, Amen. Well, today, as has become obvious, is the beginning of the new church year. It's the first Sunday of Advent. It's a time of waiting. It's a time of reflecting. It's a time of coming together to begin yet a new year within the cycle of the church year. It begins with a time of patiently waiting. Jeremiah says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made. And so we wait. We wait in the cycle of time for the fulfilling of God's promise once again. It's a feel-good time, is it not? It's a time when we think of family and friends as we did this past Thanksgiving, but it is a time of anticipating all the joy of Christmas. But Jesus, in today's gospel message, kind of changes that mood, does he not? He's talking about the dramatic end of Time, the terrible signs of the times of our day. And we don't often want to hear that, do we? We're much more waiting for the simpleness, the simplicity of that baby Jesus in the cradle. That's what we want to hear about. We want to make sure that we're probably already humming the Christmas carols. And we don't particularly like it when we don't hear those carols in church. I don't want to sing these Advent songs. I'm ready for carols. And so is the rest of the world, right? You go in the stores. They've been singing and playing carols for weeks now. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear about the sweet things, the baby Jesus, and that story. We don't want to hear about doomsday. Goodness, that's close enough. All we need to do here about Doomsday is turn on the TV and listen to the news. We don't want to hear those Doomsday predictions. We hear the predictions of yet another, another strain of virus. And we think, oh no, when is this ever going to end? Is it ever going to end? We've got enough Doomsday, Jesus. We don't need to hear it from you, too. Well, the early church was more motivated by those words that Christ was coming again. Because, as the passage makes reference to, they thought it was going to happen very soon. Very soon. And so they were motivated. Motivated to do what was right. Motivated to live lives that would be acceptable. But for us now, all we see are the signs, always signs of wars 
and greed, lies and deceptions, the effects of climate change, of floods and fires, of famine and drought. It is a waste of time to worry. But we do worry. We worry for we don't expect the time, the end time, to really come. Now the prophets, you know the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Micah, and if you've taken confirmation, you know all the major and the minor prophets. The prophets often proclaimed the worst, did they not? And Jesus, too, was a prophet. But then there is always a point of hope, pointing to yet a new way of being. Jesus, John the Baptist, preached of repent, to turn around. You see, we know what God wants this world to be, don't we? We know God's dream for this world. We're pointed to the God with us. What we celebrate at Christmas is God with us. That Christ who will show us the way, not just in a final victory, but show us the way right here and now. You know, the kingdom, the reign of God that is within us, that's the joy and the hope and the love and the peace of Advent. For we're being called to live in this uncomfortable in-between time. We're being called to live faithfully in a rather faithless world. And in Christ, we, each one of us, has been shown the way. We know what we ought to do. Oh, there are times when it gets complicated. But when it comes right down to it, we know what to do. Leo Toisto said, where love is, God is. Where love is, God is. We know what it's like to share God's love. We know what it's like to be there for others. And we know the difference it makes in other people's lives and in our own life. When you have done something for someone else, we often feel almost better than the person that we've done it for, do we not? The feeling of having done what is right fills us fills us, energizes us. We are being called in this Advent season to be alert, not just to signs of the end times, but to be alert, more importantly, to the signs of opportunities to live out God's love. And we know that the season is what it's all about, do we not? We know the multitude of ways in which we can give, the multitude of giving that goes on in the Christmas season. And we sometimes wonder and worry that it won't take place after Christmas. But it is our goal. It is what we are called to be about, to live out God's love in each and every day. That fig tree, the passage from Luke that says, look at the fig tree in all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already here. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. We know in the hope that we live that the kingdom 
is so close that the kingdom is already here inside of each one of us. The Imago Dei just waiting to explode and to be fully realized. Patiently waiting. Patiently waiting for that fruit to come upon the new leaves. Patiently waiting, adding to make it even richer, adding those nutrients of care and love and justice and fairness and equity, enriching the soil, pruning off what is dead and excess branches, getting rid of those things that get in our way, our way from being who God intends us to be, pruning, enriching, getting rid of the excess. We live patiently, my friends. We who are called to be followers of Jesus Christ, we live patiently with hope and expectation. For we know God's dream, and we become alert to the possibilities to put God's love into action alert to see ever new ways, ever more ways, to sow seeds of God's will in this world. These Advent candles of hope today, of peace and of love and of joy, and when the final center candle is lit, it is the Christ candle. It is a symbol to us that when we live in hope and peace and love and joy, Christ is at the very center, not only of the Advent wreath, but at the very center of our lives. God's dreams move forward toward Jesus God incarnate, lead the way. Jesus, who always leads the way for us. So my friends, take with you the light of this day, the candle of hope within you, this day and in each day to come. So may it be. Let the people say.
Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet together this day through Jesus Christ, our pathway, our peace, and our hope. Amen. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again. And even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you this day, if you would like to lift up someone in prayer, to trace their name in the palm of your hand and hold them as we pray. We come to you, God, with thankful hearts, thankful for your abiding presence, your steadfast love and compassion, your continuing strength to see us through the hard times, the difficult decisions, the anxious moments. We are thankful for the beauty of this world, for the snows, for the chill in the air. We are thankful for this time of rest of nature, that truly in the spring comes yet new life. We thank you, O oh God, that you call us. You call us to be part of the healing touch in how we live our lives. We are thankful for your presence with all who are in need, be they victims of violence or abuse or poverty, of racial discrimination, of all kinds of discrimination, the effects of climate change, victims of natural disasters and negligence, of those who are lost and those who have lost loved ones. We thank you for the knowledge and skill of those who bring us ways of combating viruses and sickness and illness. Be with us this day. Strengthen us for each day ahead. O oh God, we ask that you would hear all the names that are on our prayer list. For those that have come to us and for new ones just added. Help us to pray for each and every one throughout this week, whether known to us or unknown to us, that we may be part of the spreading of your love to all the world. We offer this day, O oh God, prayers that are spoken and prayers that are silent on our hearts, but always known to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son, who always walks before us, who gives us hope, and who taught us that when we pray, we might say together, Our Father, and hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen.
My friends, the God of hope fills us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen.